Zillow just flipped their forecast. We're going to look at why I think they flipped their forecast. But first, Jerome Powell gave a speech. With policy in restrictive territory, the baseline outlook and the shifting balance of risks may warrant adjusting our policy stance. From what I can see, the market interpreted is very dovish. When the bond market drops eight basis points and mortgage rates drop to a new low this year of 6.52, we've got to go back to October. Now, what does it mean? Well, markets skyrocketing on Friday. The Dow, the Nasdaq, and the S&P 500 all up nearly 2%. Traders just thrilled by the Fed Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments on Friday, signaling an interest rate cut could be coming next month. Zillow published this, and you can see here in Nashville, upgrade, they forecasted a negative 1.2% home values next year. Now they're forecasting basically flat. They flipped from negative to positive. Let's take a look at why Zillow may have changed their forecast. Now, in June, we had 92.55 active listings in single-family homes. Now we have 91.94. This is you know, it's basically flat, but it's a drop, right? And what's interesting about this drop is last year at this time, we were making new highs in active listings. This is leading the year-over-year -year number to continue to shrink. Very disappointing to me, but I'm going to show you what's driving it because I think that's even more interesting. We're going to come back to that in just a second. But let's take a look at contract volume. Contract volume is up about 125, I guess it's 115, contracts versus last year. Now, this number is clearly above not just 24, but also 2023. And I'm very curious to see if it'll continue going because if we look at mortgage rates, they're lower than they have been all year, but they're not lower than last year. In fact, this time last year, we actually tanked on mortgage rates. And that kind of makes me wonder, we're going to have a higher mortgage rate this year than last year and yet demand continues to be stronger. You know, we have Davidson County and Williamson County. Both of them lead the market in terms of pricing. Pricing is generally higher. I say generally, Davidson County is actually not anymore, which is pretty shocking. But Williamson County is much higher, almost a million dollars for the median price. And yet we're seeing some of the largest contract volume increases. In fact, what's driving the overall metrics for Nashville's market, these nine counties, it's all coming from Williamson. It's the biggest change in the median price. There's a million dollars. So we're going to come back to Williamson, but let's look at Davidson real quick. Here's Davidson County. And what we can see here, I'm going to take out 2023 because it's kind of hard to see, but contract volume is slightly above where it was last year. It's not much, but it's slightly above where it was last year. And here we can see active listings way above last year, but a little bit below where they were in July. They've peaked. This is somewhat of an unusual trend. Look at median price per foot here. We can see median price per foot is below where it was in 23 and 24 now. This was not the case earlier this year. We were making new highs. Now it's below 2023 levels. And believe it or not, in Davidson County, that's where the softness has been, look at contract price per foot, well below where it was in 24. So we are seeing, when you use price per foot, you normally normalize for like size, things like that. We are seeing lower prices in Davidson County, pretty significantly, but price cuts are now lower than where they were in July. And we can see price cut as a percentage is now in line to where it was last year in terms of the number of active listings with price cuts, now about the same percentage as it was last year. This is a tightening up, and this is the largest county, the most volume of any county, definitely one to pay attention to. But let's move on down to Williamson, because I find this to be absolutely fascinating. Look at the contract volume in Williamson. Leagues above where it was last year. Normally, what we see is when the school zone's over, people just slam the brakes on. We saw that the last two years. Not this year. It's continuing like it was in June, 381 versus last year, 289. The contract volume here is driving almost all of the increase in greater Nashville's contract volume. See here, it's 115, and almost all of that is coming from Williamson County. So of course, we have this upward price pressure on median price when the most expensive county is driving all of the increase in demand. 
I'd be curious to hear your take on why you think that is. Active listings, we can see here, they peaked in June. In June, active listings peaked for Williamson County, now down to 1382, almost 100 listings less than where they were in June. Medium price, year over year above where it was last year. And you say, well, what about price per foot? Let's go to the price per foot. Williamson County, medium price per foot. What is that? Six, 8%, 302, and now we're at 319. That's just amazing to have such an expensive market continue to thrive. And contract price per foot is finally normalizing. So what we should see going into September is that prices should start going below where they were last year. Although who knows, right? We're just now touching where we were last year on contract price per foot. Price cuts are tanking in Williamson County. We'll see if it bumps back up this next week or two, but right now it's clearly dropping. And you can see it here too. Williamson County is now below uh, where it was last year in terms of the ratio of active listings to contract volume. Price cuts as a percentage also right in line to where it was last year and it's dropping. All these signs point to a tightening housing market. And I think what Zillow is seeing is that tightening up. We see it in Davidson County. We see it in Williamson County. Now, I did have a request. One of you all asked for Sumner. So we'll look at Sumner this week. Sumner, contract volume, well above where it was last year, although the numbers are just so much smaller here, 291 to 320. So about 30 contracts higher. And active listings, well above where they were last year. But again, not quite as much as what we were seeing in Wilson last week. Price per foot, it's above where it was last year. And contract price per foot is below where it was last year, which means that prices are probably gonna end up shifting below where they were last year at some point in the next couple of weeks. We'll see if that happens, but I think that's probably what would happen. Price cuts continue to edge up. This means that there's probably some softness coming and there's more motivation for Sumner. But when you look as a percentage of active listings, it's flat, just like the other two. One thing I wanted to show you, because even looking at county does not really tell you what's going on. I think you have to look at neighborhood by neighborhood. And that's why I have this neighborhood tracker, because you can literally, in fact, let me show you. Yes. Okay. I pulled my neighborhood tracker. I have over 500 neighborhoods in there, but I pulled all the ones that have at least 10 transactions this past year, 486. And what I said was, okay, of those, 271 of those neighborhoods have an increasing price, while 215 have a decreasing price. You know, you can be in a neighborhood or you can be in an area where prices are dropping. You know, ReVenture loves covering those areas. And yeah, I mean, prices may be dropping there. But but the fact is, is that's not representative of what's happening in Nashville. There's plenty of neighborhoods that are tightening up, are getting a little bit stronger, are having price discovery and maybe on the other side of it, maybe recovering a little bit. Just so you know how I did this methodology-wise, when we're looking at price drops in a neighborhood, we compare the last 12 months median price over the previous 12 months median price. Whenever you have a small number, you need to expand the time. I think that's important to note. Nonetheless, the point the point is, is that even on a neighborhood level, we're just not seeing some across the board, massive crash that I think was predicted for this year by many housing bears. And, you know, I used to be much more bearish than I am. Now I, I just try to give you the data because, you know, quite frankly, I don't know where it goes. It always surprises me. And typically it surprises me just how strong the market is. Now, an area I have been paying close attention to is right around 440 inside the beltway. Look at this. 69 active listings, 19 under contract in 12 South. You go back to last year, you had the same number of active listings, but much fewer under contract. And so it's tightened up a lot in 12 South. I find that to be interesting. This was soft all year long. Prices started dropping and now demand started picking up. I think the places where we're seeing higher contract volume are actually the places where prices are dropping. Here you can see. Price cuts were much higher just a month ago. Now the price cuts dropped. Why? Because those houses started going under contract. Really interesting. So we may, in fact, be seeing prices drop in 12 South. And because of that, 
it's becoming a much more attractive neighborhood. Let's go to West Haven. I haven't talked about West Haven in a long time. Almost double the active listings as we had last year in the same amount of contract volume. Now, interestingly enough, West Haven is still a relatively tight market with a ratio of about three months supply. If you compare active listings to contract, last year it was about a month and a half. It got really hot at this time last year compared to the active listings. So West Haven's been a very stable market. Um, One in 20 houses in in Williamson County are going to sell. They're going to sell in West Haven. So it's a very high volume neighborhood. And you can see when we look, the annualized volume is has been picking up compared to where it was a year ago. It's been picking up. We can see prices are a little bit stronger than they were a year ago. I will tell you on these maps, especially in the high, high volume neighborhoods, it's always important to click on that size category and delineate. Are you looking at attached, those condos or townhouses, zero lot lines, or detached where, you know, and a specific size. Like let's look at the houses the smallest houses versus the largest houses. Here, the smallest houses in West Haven, you can see, you know, that's where you kind of have this blowout where the bottoms are getting low or you're having some that just fall low. And then you also have some that go high. Whereas if you look at the largest houses, you can see they've been kind of picking up all year. Prices have been going up for the largest houses in West Haven. I find that to be interesting. So it's always good to really hone in on the size and type of the property when you're looking and you scatter plot it across, you can really see patterns that help you know what's going on in that neighborhood. I find it great. Now, generally, look, if you're planning to buy, the fall is the best time generally. I will tell you this fall is better than last fall. There's way more inventory, but it is tightening up, which means the quality listings are either getting delisted or they're getting sold And so the quality may be dropping more than it did last year. Kind of disappointed. I'm hoping it picks back up. But right now, the trend is that active listings are tightening up. Contract volume seems to be stronger than last year. Median sales price is now 6% above last year. We talked about that being driven by mix. Zillow just flipped their forecast to positive. Price cuts as a percentage of active listings are kind of stabilized. They're not rapidly growing. All these signs lead to a much more stable fall. It's not falling out. Prices aren't falling through. There is no housing crash. Now, there may be a neighborhood that's crashing or condos that are crashing, but I got to tell you, even in the condo market, there's still builders planning to build condos right now. Makes no sense to me, but they still seem to think they can sell condos. So there's just a lot of optimism in our market. And what I would encourage you to do Be careful out there. Pay attention. Stick within your budget. Have a plan. Use an experienced agent. Use data. Make offers that make you comfortable. Don't be bullied by sellers. If they're unrealistic or they're not serious, just move on. There's plenty of opportunities out there. There's way more this year than last year. And with that, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Thanks for watching.